Um, each one of these objects is, uh, is unique and has a little story of the, the history of the solar system in it. Um, there's Eris, which is the one that's more massive than Pluto. We just found out yesterday that it's actually a little bit smaller than Pluto um, by just a few tens of kilometers, but it's still 27% more massive, um, which is interesting. So it's actually a lot more rock on the inside than Pluto is. They have had very different histories. I would love to get up close to there and see what's going on. Um, another of my favorites is uh, Maki Maki. Maki Maki is kind of a transition object between Pluto and some of the smaller objects. It's got the methane and the nitrogen like Pluto, but it's a little bit smaller, so it's losing some of its atmosphere. The weirdest object that I think, I, I think this is fair to say, the weirdest object in the entire solar system, and, and I'm willing to bet it's one of the weirder objects in the entire universe. I'm, I'm, I'm just going to go on a limb on this one. Um, I don't know, it's a big universe. It's a, it's a weird object, though. Go ahead, prove it wrong. It's, it's, uh, it's Haumea. Haumea is uh, it's shaped sort of like a football that's been deflated and stepped on. I used to always say that um, many years ago, and now when I say that, people laugh. But it's like a, a deflated football stepped on. It's spinning end over end. It's twice as big in this direction as it is in this direction one and a half times in this direction, spins end over end like this. Its outer surface is almost pure water ice, frozen water on it. And yet, when, you, when we measured its mass, oh, there it is, it's the oblong one up there. Um, when we measured its mass, we realized that it has the mass of almost pure rock. So it turns out to be a rock covered in this thin layer of water ice. It's got two moons going around it. Each of those looks like a little ice cube. And what's more, we have now found, so our original hypothesis was that it was a big object that was rock on the inside, ice on the outside, got smashed really hard by another object four and a half million years ago, started spinning, and that smashing would have cracked it open, and all the ice would have gone flying away. And two of those moons that you see, those two moons are icy chunks that were left over. And in the meantime, in the last decade, we've now found about 15 other icy chunks used to be part of Haumea that are now not in orbit around Haumea, but they're in orbit around the sun that got smashed so hard. So it, it has this family of stuff trailing in the same orbit. It's, it's a fascinating object. It's, um, it's my favorite name of any object of all the ones. That, they all have pretty good names, but Haumea is the, the Hawaiian goddess of childbirth and, and her, in Hawaiian mythology. Uh, her children are all pieces of her that break off. So I just thought it was the best name that we came up with. I'll stop you there, except I know we <laughs> 30 seconds on Sedna, because uh, that's, I mean, we call Mars the red planet. Yeah, so Sedna um, is the uh, probably the coldest body that we know of in the solar system. It's on this 12,000 year orbit around the sun. It never even comes close to, to any of the planets. It's, uh, it's about twice, the closest it ever comes to the sun is twice as far away as, as Neptune is, a little further than that, almost three times as far away. Um, it shouldn't be there. It's, it's one of these things, which is, which is really exciting. When you discover something that shouldn't be there, you have learned something new about the solar system. Uh, I think, we, we've, been, we've been debating for, for a decade what it means. Um, I think we are closing in on how Saturn got in its weird orbit. And um, I, I, I am not allowed to tell you right now. But I'm gonna tell you that wait a few months and uh, I think we know the answer, and we'll be talking about that soon. Tantalizing. Okay. <laughs> he's a good scientist. He's not going to do it before publication. That's not a good thing to do. But you can hit him up after. Take a five dollar bill or something. Ten, 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 ten bucks is going in for a Caltech guy. Um, I can talk about it a little bit, which is so. All if you if you look at the Sedna, the one that we talked about that has a twelve thousand year orbit. Um, it has a, it's a very elongated orbit, so it's, it's right now almost as close as it ever comes to the sun. And when we discovered it, um, we could only have seen it for about 200 years. After 200 years, it's so faint that we wouldn't see it. So 200 years out of a 12,000 year orbit is about 1 in 60. So that's where we come up with these numbers. There's probably something like 60 objects the size of Sedna, which is about half the size of Pluto, a third the size of Pluto. 60 of those, maybe we got a little bit lucky, maybe maybe there are only 30 and we found one, or maybe they're, they're a little unlucky, they're 90 and we only found one. But there must be many of those. And so if you, if you assume that there are 60 objects the size of Sedna, and you try to then guess what the largest object out there is, you say that's, that's where you come up with the 20 or 30 the size of Pluto, maybe a couple of those. <laughs> 
couple times bigger than Pluto, one or two that are four or five times Pluto. So that's, you're getting up to Mercury, uh, Earth, mm -hmm. Venus. It, that wouldn't surprise me at all. 